So I'm actually, here's my one template. That's my little koi fish. And I actually already cut one out. There's two of them because there's gonna be two different sizes. So here is the first one I cut out. So there's that. And then um, this is gonna be my uh, guide for like some of the colors. What I'm gonna do is this is what I actually use a lot to cut some of my templates out. This is, I think it's called a ceramic. I hope you guys can see it. It is a little dark over here. Um, it's a ceramic knife. And um, this is actually super sharp. And it has this little thing on it. And it's actually really, really good. And then that's what I usually always use. Now, I've seen some YouTubers um, and cake decorators. These are uh, clay um, modeling tools. So I'm actually gonna try with this and with this. I've seen um, somebody use this. Um, I don't know about this part, what I would use that for right now, but these are actually, you know, double-sided. That's like that side. But um, I'm just gonna leave the little plastic protective pieces on it. But I am gonna use this side and see how well that works and I am going to use this side maybe for more intricate parts. So I'm going to roll out my, actually no, I'm going to do this first, my parchment paper. I'm going to roll it out. I don't need a big, big piece. Ooh. Dollar store, one dollar parchment paper and you get 25 whatever PI is, you get seven meters, whatever that is. Okay, so I do have my wax paper. Here's my fondant roller. I'm gonna take these off because I don't really need the sizes because I want kind of a thick, I want it thick and I have my cornstarch over here. All right, so here's my fondant that I actually made last night. It's a nice fresh batch of marsh my marshmallow fondant. Let's see if I can scoot this over so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. All right, I had it wrapped up tight, so. All right. This is a nice batch, nice and soft. There we go. I'm gonna take a chunk of it off. You do got to knead this a little bit. It's still a little soft and sticky, so I'm just going to put this off to the side. I like to just put my hands in a little bit of cornstarch and then just start kind of get this a little... Oh, it's got a cramp in my hand. That's one thing. I think when bakers get older, they'll have cramps in their hands from trying to get the fondant nice and pliable. Whew. Sometimes I cheat and I actually put this in the microwave for like five seconds, six seconds, something like that. But it's all right. I'm not too, too worried about it. All right, so I'm just gonna start rolling this because it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. It's got a little bit of ridges in it, but that's okay. Cause you know what? We need scales and stuff anyway. So I'm just gonna roll this out. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Does anybody else have out there my little, my subscribers who I love very much? Do you guys have kids that have started school or is getting ready to go in school or anything like that? Like I said, I was an emotional mess last night. I have no idea why, but I truly was a wreck. Okay, oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so I got my little fish. This, I wanted it thick. That's, I wanted it nice and thick. And there's a reason why I wanted it thick, um, because I wanted to have some kind of dimension. So when I cut it out, I can like kind of puff it up a little bit. I don't know, we'll see. I gotta, I'm gonna work with it. We'll see what we got going on. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of cornstarch and I'll put it on there just so the paper don't stick. So 
we got our little, we got our fishy. Oh my lord, Luna's in the bathroom playing with the. Now this is like super sharp, so if you get one of these, please be careful. So I'm just gonna poke it down. Ooh, see, I almost slipped. Poke it down in there, and this is my eyeball. And then this is the front of it. Now this, the knife does pull a little bit. So you do wanna be careful with that. I don't know if you can hear the wind chimes, but that's my cat messing with my wind chimes in the bathroom. All right, so we got that part. Like I said, this fondant is thick. So make sure you really are getting through that fondant. I even come out a little bit. If you want to cut the pieces away, sometimes that helps to see your shape, see what you're doing. It's all up to you what you want to do, what you're more comfortable with. Excuse, I have my windows open. It's actually not that bad out today. So I said, screw it. I'm having my windows open. I know you guys can't really see CC too much what I'm doing, but I hope you can. I'm just cutting it all out. Oh, let me um, cut that piece off. Like I said, sometimes the paper moves and that's okay. Just realign it and then you can always go back over the pieces. Because you don't want the paper to like stick to your fondant, but you still want it to be pretty accurate to what you're cutting. Like this can come out a little bit more. Well... See, sometimes it just gets a little teeny tiny tricky. And then I think on Friday, as I make the cake, even though it's fondant Friday, I think I'm going to show you guys my little uh, recipe. I actually found it on um, Cake Central for homemade piping gel. And uh, it's what I use as I made a swimming pool cake one year and that was uh the recipe i used for the water and that's what i use with um anything anytime i need water that is my piping gel recipe and it tastes so good it tastes like um it tastes like a like a sweet tart type thing all right come on little fishy tail so we got that. All right, so let me get this. Oh, hello, kitty, kitty. What are you doing up here? This is why we have squirt bottles. Get out of here. This is why I don't professionally make cakes because people will get so offended. If you're not a cat lover or a cat owner, you wouldn't understand. So, all right, so here is the base of our fish. Hold it up a little bit. So there we go. Now I'm just going to go around the fish and smooth out, you know, just kind of round it out. Now what I want to try to do is kind of make it more rounded. So I'm just going to kind of bring it down like this because I really want it to look more fishy. Even though there's going to be stuff on top of it, but I just want it to look more, more realistic, I guess. But I'm just going to try to soften the sides a little bit. Like I said, this is where I know where my eyes are going to go. Let's get the tail, get a nice tips on the tail. Now, what I'm going to do, oh, that's, I'm making it like a mermaid tail. I don't need that, all that like that. Okay. Tail's going to be a little different, but that's fine. 
can always improvise. I think I might take this right here. And I'm not going to go through the template, but I'm going to go over top so I know where to make little indentations on the fish, where I know my colors are going to be at. And so I know where my pieces go. But you don't want to get rid of this yet because... Um, you're going to want to save this template to cut this piece out because that's going to be your piece that's going to go, um, it's going to go like, uh, for your fin, the top fin. So you get like a little three dimensional. Okay. Yeah. So that worked. You can't, it's very vague, which is fine. I'm just going to kind of go over it a little bit more so you can get the, you know, the gist of where the colors are. Like I said, if you need to go over it a little bit harder, that's fine too. If you need to do that. So I actually like this tool. I'm, I know I was supposed to use this to cut, but it also works really well for this like marking so I'm just kind of I'm kind of going back over it a little bit just so I know where my markings are gonna go and then I'm gonna um, add scales and stuff and that's where um, I'm gonna use I think I'm gonna use a tip for that and I'm just gonna use that for the scales just trying to make it look as realistic again as possible. I mean, I guess it don't have to be that real. I don't know. I'm just doing this. I wish you guys could like see overhead what I'm doing, but again, low budget productions. So we'll move that. And then one more little cut. This is already 17 minutes for this. I don't know if I'll be able to do both fish in one video, but at least you get the gist of it. All right. Okay. So, here is... I don't know how well you can see it. So here's my the template for my fish. I have all the markings um, laid out. So actually what I'm going to do is, uh, not right now, but I'm going to um, take a powdered food coloring and I'm going to paint. I'm going to do more details. Like I'm going to do the fins. I'm going to make the markings in the fin and, um, and all that. And then... You know, just kind of play with it a little bit, see what all, you know, I actually wanted to try to do both, cut both out, uh, one with this and one with this, but I actually think working with this, I see that it pulls a little bit. Again, this is not regular fondant. This is my homemade marshmallow fondant. So, um, it's a little bit different consistency, but this is just what I'm used to use to working with because like I said I've been working with this for a very long time the past six years so this is what I know um but yeah so I'm going to uh cut out the other fish and I'm gonna do the same thing on that and then